plants have really grown this week. They're probably growing almost an inch a day. Probably 13 or 14 inches. And we're about a week away from the big transplant day. The tomatoes are finally growing a little bit because we've had some nice warm sunshine. So now that the plants are getting a little taller, we're taking bamboo stakes, uh, 18 inch bamboo stakes, and we're gonna put them beside each plant and pop them down in the cube. Once we have the bamboo stakes next to the plant, we have these little clip rings and we're going to attach the plants to the bamboo stake. Now the plant will continue to grow up the stake and not fall over on us. One thing we have to watch for on our early tomatoes is thrip damage. If you look really close, you can see the white speckles on the plant. Um, find another example here for you. There's some on this leaf that's getting pretty bad. There's another one. Thrips are very small, less than a millimeter in length, and I don't even think the camera will be able to pick one up. I actually don't see any right now, but I see the damage that they're leaving behind. Their sucking mechanisms are piercing the cell walls of the tomatoes and sucking the cells dry, and that's why the tissue is turning white. Thrips are a very difficult insect to control on tomatoes, and you can control them with uh, pesticides and chemicals, and I don't want to use those on my greenhouse tomatoes. We grow those organically, so I'll show you some of the products that we use to control thrips. One item we like to use on a lot of our vegetables for controlling insects is Azagard. This is just an extract of neem oil. Then we also use Evergreen. And Evergreen, the active ingredient is pyrethrins not permethrins. Permethrins is a synthetic pesticide. Pyrethrins are the extract of the chrysanthemum flower. Now conserve also is an organic biological and the active ingredient is spinosad and I right off the top of my head I don't know much about spinosad but it is labeled for organic use as well. Now on the evergreen um, I know pyrethrins are labeled for organic use, but this one also has a uh, piperonal butoxide, which helps as uh, like an activator or some kind to help it work better. And I think because of that being in there, it can't be labeled for organic use, but I'm not, or I'm not a certified organic farm, so I'm not concerned about that. I'm just concerned about the active ingredients that are being sprayed on my food that I eat myself and that I sell. So those are three of the items that we like to use to control insects in our vegetable crops. All right, I got a bottle of Conserve, which is Spinosad, mixed up. And let's spray some plants. Just spray a fine mist across the plants like this. And that usually takes care of them. Now once all these tomatoes have been transplanted into the larger greenhouses and are growing you know, five, six, seven feet tall and taller, um, obviously a little squirt bottle is not gonna do the job. And we have a kind of a pull behind motorized uh, 25 gallon sprayer for pulling up and down the aisles of the greenhouse for spraying the thrips and spider mites and aphids, other things that might get into the tomatoes. Now, when we start spraying in the open field, uh, we'll pull a large field sprayer behind a tractor and blast the spray out into the plants and uh, cover lots of acreage that way. Now, if you're wondering how in the world the thrips get into the greenhouse, I used to wonder the same thing. They uh, often will overwinter in plant debris or dead weed debris along the outside edges of the greenhouse, and they can survive through the winter most of the time. So that's why it's important to thoroughly clean your greenhouse at the end of the season to prevent thrips from getting in here. But I obviously don't do a good enough job of doing it because I get them every year. Now, since we caught them early, and I just started noticing a little bit of damage on a few of the leaves about a week ago, we usually can get this controlled fairly quickly. Now, if I would let this go a few more weeks, they would be laying eggs on the underside of the leaves, which you can't even see until they've hatched. And you'll see little larvas crawling around on the undersides of the leaves. Now, once thrips have laid their eggs and there's larvas crawling around on the undersides of the leaves, it's a whole nother ball game getting these things sprayed. 
I can't just go down the aisle of plants and spray the tops like I did today. I have to get the spray mist up under the plant to hit the undersides of the leaves. And it seems like a never ending battle at that point. So hopefully catching them early and getting them sprayed today will take care of this problem. So the first job today will be planting these baby plants into the holes of the four inch rock wool cubes. And we have a bunch. We got about 1,300 of them to do today. Four different varieties all the way over to the back corner of the greenhouse. This is one of the jobs that my kids don't mind doing so much because it's kind of fun. Getting the tear off the plants and sticking them down the hole. I mean, greenhouse work doesn't get much easier than that. So they're home from school. Let's go grab them and get these things transplanted. Now that all the plants are transplanted into the four inch cubes, we're going to work on putting the bamboo stakes into the four inch cubes to hold the plants up. It didn't take very long to do the bamboo stakes today. With everybody helping, it only took like 20 minutes and now they are safe to move and won't have to worry about the plants falling over and getting damaged. All right, I'm in my greenhouse where we will be planting our first tomato crop here next week. It's an absolute mess in here right now. I have a lot of work today to start preparing everything. First on the agenda is scrubbing out these three tanks, oh, four tanks, and mixing up a fresh batch of fertilizer. We'll get our hot water heater, fill back up and light the pilot light. We'll check the two heaters to make sure they work properly. And lastly, uh, we'll get the boiler fired up fill it up with water and it takes quite a bit of water because there's water lines in the floor of this greenhouse for radiant heat. Actually I have them concentrated under the buckets. So all these black hoses right here are the uh, floor heat for under the buckets to keep the roots warm. And one of the tedious jobs that I never like to do is once we get everything running in here we'll pressurize the water lines and check all these drippers even though i flush them to clean all the junk out in the fall there's a lot of them that still get plugged and so we'll pressurize the lines find out which ones are bad and replace them now this is our fan jet this is what transfers the heat from the heater and distributes it throughout the greenhouse. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and make sure it works. So, fan jet. Put it on. On. Now it's filling up there. There we go. The hot air comes out of these three inch holes that are punched in the fan jet tube. It's called a convection tube. And the warm air will be blown down onto the plants in an eight o'clock, four o'clock position. got water that's always a good thing better double check our propane level it should be about full yeah pretty close 75 percent we have heat always glad to see the heaters working Yep, they both fired up just fine. I'm ready to fire this water heater up, but there has been some mice down in there creating havoc. So I got my air compressor out here. We're gonna blow this thing out. Clean it up a little bit before I light the pilot light. You can see mice have been chewing up insulation. I forgot to put poison out this year, so uh, they've really tore it up in here. Sometimes a steel wool packed up in there helps but they always still find a way around it poison is about the best way to stop them all right water heaters full of water 
Got all the junk blown out. Let's light the pilot light. Nice. Make sure she fires up. Sweet. That's what I like to see. Looks like we're good to go. All right, these are the three billow pumps that proportion the fertilizer out of these three clear tanks into the blue mixing tank. And several times a year, we have to tear them completely apart, clean all the gunk out of them and the sediment that gets in the lines. So this one's been put back together with the O-rings and is ready to go. And now we just got to do these two here. Put the O-rings back in and these little things here, I think they're called bobbits. All put back together. Let's fire up the billow pumps. And looks like they're all working. This allows us to mix three different kinds of fertilizer concentrations in these three tanks. So they're kept separate and come together in the blue mixing tank before fed to the tomatoes. Now we need to flush all the water lines. There's five of them. Let's turn the pump on and flush all the junk out of these five risers. And then we'll flush each line and then pressurize the whole system. Pretty nasty. It's clearing up real nice. I've been working on the boiler here for a few minutes. Got it all filled with water and the pump's working. So let's fire it up and make sure she works. We have fire. All right. Alrighty, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, we will be transplanting tomatoes out here in the greenhouse. So stay tuned for that. I will see you on the next video.